Since 2015, Nickelodeon has charmed us with the tales of innocent friendships, exciting new experiences, and heartbreaking emotional roller coasters with its series, Harvey Beaks. At times, silly and out there, at others, surprisingly down to earth. Harvey's life conquering insecurity and doing good is the pinnacle of the show loved by both kids and bigger kids. That's us. Harvey may be on the way out this summer, but here are 107 facts to help you remember this adventure for as long as you want to. Harvey Beaks is the story of the adventurous friendship between a sheltered kid named Harvey and his child friends, Fee and Fu, in their literally picturesque home of Big Bark Woods. There's a huge cast of characters, all of whom add a little something more to the mix. The series was created by Texas animator C.H. Greenblatt, who you might also know as the creator of Chowder. It's one of the many to grace the list of Nickelodeon's original programs in the Nicktoons. There have been dozens over the years. We've come a long way since Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy. Greenblatt calls Harvey Beaks the goofy grandchild of his predecessors. He wanted to make a series that was all about childhood, just like Hey Arnold or Rugrats before it. In fact, Greenblatt first got his start in the early days of Nick's star series, Spongebob Squarepants. The original title for the Harvey Beaks series was Bad Seeds, before the name was forced to change for copyright reasons. Go figure. Greenblatt first developed the basic concept in 2009, around the time Chowder was winding down. That's a long development period. After doing a show about sweet characters, it evolved into a story about being inspired to be brave, by people just a little crazier than you are. Greenblatt defines personal growth as realizing that your decisions affect other people and acting accordingly. Most of the series' themes deal with that in some way or another, using the different characters. For the show, Greenblatt even brought over a few old friends. They're the same company that brought us Chowder's puppets and crazy effects. They even managed to squeeze a cameo of everyone's favorite apprentice chef into the show. Look for Chowder at the party in the Harvey Beaks episode, Fee and Foo's First Birthday. Harvey Beaks is storyboard driven, which means that each episode is developed more through art and outlines than from a script. It definitely explains how cinematic and visual the show can be. Each episode of the show took around nine months to finish. Hey, animation takes commitment. Just to create 20 episodes, it took two years of overlapping work. The art is drawn by hand, then scanned into a computer and colored digitally. If it seems like an arduous process, that's because it is. But quite a few animated series are done this way nowadays. For the series, Greenblatt went looking for new blood. He searched social media for animators and writers with great work and promise, but not much prior experience. Over three-fourths of the team had never worked on an animated series before. The studio that does most of the animation work for Harvey Beaks is Yes On Entertainment over in South Korea. Everything else, from storyboarding to character design, is done by Greenblatt and company. When it came to visuals, the staff wanted the woods of Little Bark Grove to have a sense of natural mystique and wonder. Greenblatt more than once described the tone of the series as a punk version of Winnie the Pooh. The staff wanted Harvey's world to have a sense of the magical and fantastical, but they wanted the character's actual challenges to be more grounded. That's why they have gigantic lake spirits and magic bugs and whatever the heck that giant finger was, but their problems still feel real. The early episode Pichu, the one featuring the gigantic lake spirit, is actually an updated version of the series' original pilot. Of course, there were a few things that got shifted around between then and release. For example, Techno Bear was originally a Russian adult and voiced by Greenblatt himself. In the current show, Techno Bear is voiced by Mason Vaughn, who also plays Papa Wheelie in The Loud House. After seeing the pilot, Nickelodeon needed to be convinced a little more. So, Greenblatt came out with early work on The Tale of Less Squirrels, which was a hit. The episode was produced straight away. The show's music was composed by Ernesto Guerrero, better known as Ego Plum, who has also lent his sound skills to Star vs. the Forces of Evil and Making Fiends. Ego loved tributing his favorite musicians in the score, and it makes for some great musical easter eggs. For example, the crazy song during Harvey's mosh pit adventure in the episode Rock Bark Rocks is performed by punk rocker Leonard Gray Phillips of the Dickies. Ego compared Harvey's experience to his teen years attending concerts for the first time, and wanted to share that feeling by asking one of his favorite singers to join in. It wasn't the only time Ego tried bringing on one of his favorites. For the episode Ocean Promotion, he asked Andy Partridge to sing the show's latest of the many nods to him, the big number on the whims of Fancy Flight. Sadly, it was not meant to be that time. Ego said A Day of No To Do is his favorite episode of the series. He also said the featured song, The Chance Parade, was the hardest thing he'd ever had to write for the series, and really spoke to him. It's all about the wonders and unknown risks, so I'd say it can speak to all of us. Music has a pretty big role in Harvey's storytelling. Like you'd hear in Peanuts, Harvey Beaks used themes for characters and feelings going all the way back to the first episode. Keep an ear out for the theme from Pichu whenever the show makes you feel a little misty-eyed. And in fact, Harvey Beaks is the first Nickelodeon original series to ever be scored with a full orchestra. Now let's talk characters, and the people who made them what they are. Like with Chowder, Greenblatt made the decision to have most of the kids in Harvey Beaks be voiced by actual child actors. Max Charles, the voice of Harvey, was just 12 when the show first aired, and this wasn't the first Nicktoon to do that. Hey Arnold kept a strictly child cast, including in the reboot, and so did Rocket Power. These days, Max is better known for voicing Simba's son, Kion, in Disney's The Lion Guard. 
From sheltered kid to courageous lion, not a bad step. According to Greenblatt, there's a lot of himself in Harvey's safe, sheltered outlook. They even share a name. The H in C.H. Greenblatt is, you might have guessed, Harvey. He's not the only one to give Harvey a little real-life influence. His beloved toy Chicky was inspired by a toy that belonged to a child that writer Shane Houghton used to babysit. Over the years, the original Chicky wore down from use, the same fate Harvey tried to keep Chicky from facing at Fee's hands. Art, or toys, imitate life. That little song Harvey is always humming to himself was first written by Greenblatt, but really took off because Max Charles took a shine to it. Between the two of them, it became such a trend that later they decided to give it a whole rock number in Rock Bark Rocks. And his big dance number for the episode Nightclub Night was actually inspired by the Vogue Kid meme. The crew really liked the energy of a kid just doing what they love, even if it's a little silly. It sums up Harvey in the show pretty well. Fans often wonder what kind of critters Fee and Foo are, but Greenblatt always insists that they're non-specific. If asked, he's been known to call them gremlins or imps from time to time. Though Fee fills the role of protective big sis, she and Fu are actually twins. Though, according to Greenblatt, she did come a few seconds earlier. Fee is played by Angelina Waller, who was 15 when the show started, and Waller's no stranger to Nickelodeon. She's been on both Nick Jr.'s Bubble Guppies and Blaze and the Monster Machines. Fee likes to claim that she can't read, but according to Greenblatt, she's actually getting a lot better at it, thanks to confidence building help from Harvey's mom. Fu was originally played by Jackson Brundage, who One Tree Hill fans might recognize is Jamie Scott. Brundage was 13 when the show first started. When his voice started to change, he was replaced as Foo by the Protector's own Thomas Robinson. If you think Harvey's dad Irving sounds like a friendly robot, that's because his voice actor, Scott Adsit, also plays Baymax in Big Hero 6 the series. And while Irving's dad band may look like the Wiggles, the Silly's music is actually a tribute to classic rock band The Pixies, another of Eagle Plum's many references. If Harvey's mom gives older fans Reno 911 flashbacks, that's because she's voiced by Trudy Weigel herself, Carrie Kenny. We see Miriam's wild delinquent streak pop up from time to time, and there's a bit more to her relationship with her parents than we saw. The writers even wanted to do an episode where she ends up in jail after an argument with her mother, who's an ex-judge, but they never got a chance to do it. Harvey's little sister, Michelle, spent all of the first season as an egg before hatching in the episode, The New Bugaboo. The writers wanted her to be a real force of chaos and be the first big thing to shake up Harvey's life, but being the show that it is, there was still lots of love there. All of Harvey's grandparents were special guest stars. First off, his mom's mother, Miley, is voiced by famous movie mom, Catherine O'Hara. Her ex-cop husband, Aiden, is played by Parks and Rec's own Jim O'Hare. Harvey's paternal grandpa, Roland, is voiced by Home Improvement alum, Blake Clark. According to Greenblatt, Roland's wife passed away sometime before the beginning of the series, explaining his frown and somber mood. Poor Roland. Greenblatt himself plays the stick in the mud, Dade, who he intended to be someone that might see Fee and Foo's oddness from a normal perspective. Kind of like good old Frank Grimes. Dade was originally gonna be played by a child actor too, but Nickelodeon liked how funny Greenblatt Black was in the role and suggested he do it, making Dave one of the only two kids in the show voiced by an adult. The other kid voiced by an adult, by the way, is Princess, whose soothing tones are provided by one of the show's writers and directors, Andre Soloff. Princess's dad, Dr. Roberts, doesn't actually have his medical degree. Doctor just happened to be his first name, which of course explains the lack of competence. Yeah, just keep chucking crystals at it, it'll be fine. And Fu wasn't the only character to get a voice change. In the first few episodes, Dr. Roberts was played by Matt Barry before being switched to veteran voice actor Jeff Bennett. And you can say the same about Rooter too. Like Fu, Harvey's most macho friend is part of the Two Kids Club, one for each season, Laz Maimon and Addie Chandler. Kratz is played by Matthew Zhang, who's also a Nick vet. He played oddball kid Oliver of her on Nick's superhero series, Henry Danger. And going back to that Winnie the Pooh influence, Kratz's toneless personality was inspired by Eeyore, though at least he isn't losing his house every day. Greenblatt didn't just cast network vets for the kids. Nicole Taylor Waddell, who plays the shy and nervous Claire, did mostly indie projects before the show, like Joffet Corden's Scared Sweet. But I guess she's just that talented, because playing Claire got her nominated for a Young Artist Award. You don't have to watch the show long to tell that Claire has a huge crush on Foo. According to Greenblatt, as a sheltered kid, having a thing for a bad boy is her way of rebelling. The jumbled words of that anime style song for Claire's anime style food daydream in the episode Buds Before Studs came from writing a few lyrics, then putting the words through Google Translate twice. Once from English to Japanese, then from Japanese to English. The result? Just the right amount of sappiness. While there were the occasional crushes here and there, Greenblatt made it clear early that romance and shipping were not going to be much of the focus in the series. No love triangles here. Not that that ever stopped the shippers. The delightfully spacey character, Piri Purr, was brought to us by Madeline Curry, who 
who was 13 when the show first aired. Piri was originally going to be a kooky foreign exchange student who only spoke gibberish, but then the idea was dropped because it wasn't working quite well. They might always call him Techno Bear, but the kid's name is really Terry Bear. He's also adopted, but as a bear son of turtles, you might expect that, even if he didn't. Techno Bear's music was fun to make for Ego Plum. Since he didn't just have to make techno music, he had the challenge of writing really bad techno music. Cue some truly silly compositions. Techno Bear's parents were inspired by the show Jersey Shore. They were envisioned as a lovable, trashy couple, and were similar to the Jersey Shore cats with their joysy accents and nicknames for life. Kathy, with a K's big plushy cat design, was inspired by Totoro from Miyazaki's My Neighbor Totoro. She doesn't take anyone on any fancy adventures, but then again, Harvey's world is plenty magical already. Jeremy's got another familiar sound you might recognize. Anytime you hear him go to pieces, that's the showrunner. Greenblatt plays double duty with him and Dade. Jeremy's nemesis, Dark Tooth, who we get to see in Jeremy, Defender of the Forest, is a nod to He-Man's archenemy, Skeletor. Hilariously nasty raccoon Randall is played by stand-up comedian Mark Maron, and the voice actor for Randy's overbearing mother, Nick Sumita, is actually one of the writers of Harvey Beaks. Moff is another odd sort. One part steampunk fanatic, one part depressed butt of the jokes. The crew had a lot of fun sticking him in episodes as the go-to character to be humiliated. His dramatic air is provided by Kids in the Hall's Dave Foley, who also played Chris in Dan Versus. And for all you Chowder fans, that late guardian we keep mentioning, that was Dwight Schultz. As if we could ever forget the ageless Mung doll. Speaking of special appearances, Jackie Slitherstein, the eccentric author of Harvey's favorite book series, got her charm and mystique from famed personality, RuPaul, one of the series' most and favorite guest stars. Little Bark's residents range from a little bit strange to outright unbelievable. There's even a ghost, uh, sorry, tree spirit hanging around. According to Greenblatt, tree spirits are naturally boring, they're trees after all, which explains Bartlebert's love of the mundane. There were a ton of awesomely weird characters just hanging out in the background of Harvey Beaks. Greenblatt said that his favorite wallflower is this lumpy guy. His name is Peanutty, but he's lovingly referred to as Potato Nut Sack by fans and creators alike. The town of Little Bark Grove, where all of these characters live, is just part of the larger woods known as Big Bark. It's a pretty big place. Little Bark is actually just the suburbs. In addition to Little Bark, there's also Fog Bark, Rot Bark, Rock Bark, Wet Bark, Far Bark, No Bark, I think there's a dog pun in there somewhere, but let's move on. With so much bark, they had to get creative to give each place the right look. For instance, artists Charlie Gavin and Chris Houghton had little to go on for the ominous Fog Bark, so they decided to base it off Yoda's home Dagobah in Star Wars, right down to the hungry monsters hidden in the marsh. By the way, yes, Chris and Shane Houghton are related. They're brothers. These days, they're out in the world making big city greens together. Check it out. Not everyone always found Harvey, Fee, and Fu's adventures as charmingly innocent. In the UK, Fu's penchant for public indecency and potty references got the first episode banned, as well as the episode The Nature of Nature. Even in conversation, Fanny is a lot ruder across the pond, so Fanny packs became belly bags. Like Nickelodeon's own magazine, Harvey Beaks has a comic series brought to us by children's publisher Paper Cuts Graphic Novels. It's got all new stories, but what you really want it for is for the Fee facts. To give an idea of how animators relax, the crew of Harvey Beaks would often play video games like Super Smash Bros. during their downtime in the office. Nickelodeon even held a studio-wide Smash Bros. tournament, which the Harvey Beaks crew participated in. Unfortunately, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles team won, although that's still a pretty cool story to tell your friends. That wasn't the only tournament that Nickelodeon has ever hosted. The Harvey Beaks gang did get their payback another day, this time in Mario Kart. The crew's love of games wasn't just limited to real life. The episode Bark Kart, for example, is an outright homage to Mario Kart, in case you missed the moment with the green shell. The episode Yampians also has a reference to Mario Kart. At one point, Harvey and his dad Irving hit a square box over their heads and receive an item. This is a throw to the floating squares in Mario Kart that give you special items to use when you hit them. Guess they really did love Mario Kart. And who doesn't? They didn't just pay homage to video games, either. Yampians comes from Greenblatt's love of board games. The hilariously complicated rules of Harvey's favorite game were inspired by a real-life game called Agricola and Euro games in general. Harvey even makes a reference to our favorite lazy cat, Garfield, in the episode The Finger. In one moment, Harvey is looking at a comic book and says, man, that cat sure likes lasagna. Lasagna is a food that Garfield loves and is often referenced in the comics. There are a lot of real life influences for episodes and not all of them were so chipper. The message in the episode The Finger is about accepting that some bad things can't be fixed by one person and it came from the team's feelings about the earthquake in Haiti. The somber song of loneliness from the episode Alone came from Eagle Plum's feelings on the passing of David Bowie, giving the episode's feelings that much more heart. 
Despite being the head of the series, Greenblatt rarely boarded episodes himself, leaving that to his writers and artists. Alone is one of those exceptions, along with the Christmas special. Both were all Greenblatt, start to finish. Not all of the real life inspiration was tragic though. The episode, Recipe for Disaster, was inspired by a similar catastrophe that Shane Houghton once cooked up for his parents. Not quite as spectacular, we're guessing. One of Greenblatt's favorite things about working on the show was how laid back Nickelodeon was about letting his team write what they wanted to write, instead of always trying to control their stories. They let the crew use whatever ideas and influences they wanted. So that each show would have its own identity, Greenblatt intentionally wanted Harvey's adventures to avoid fourth wall humor that Chowder was known for. So you won't see much of it in Harvey Beaks episodes. Okay, well, we're just not going to talk about that. And while there wasn't much of the fourth wall breakage, you can catch loads of fun references if you pay attention. Anime fans, look out for Fee wearing Kamina of Tengen, Tapa, Gurren Lagann's signature shades and cape in the episode King of the Castle. Another reference is a nod to the manga and anime Cardcaptor Sakura. In the episode Techno Scare, Claire is dressed up as Cardcaptor Sakura herself. And then there's Harvey giving a crime scene the CSI Miami treatment and someone stealing my stuff. Insert pun here. The Christmas special was inspired by Disney's Fantasia, as it's a collection of sweet stories with little dialogue, but lots of music. And what modern day show can survive without making some internet references? In the episode Steamgate, which is perhaps a reference to Stargate, the internet search engine Gurgle is a parody of the all-knowing real-life search engine Google. The hour-long musical spectacular episode Steampunks was essentially the show's big movie, you might say, where the crew pulled out all the stops with big visuals, Hollywood-style music, and an epic plot. A suitable climax for a show that still had even more to offer. The series finale is entitled The End and the Beginning, which will feature Fee and Fu reuniting with their parents and an origin story of sorts explaining Harvey, Fee, and Fu's friendship. Had the show not been canceled, there were plans to have Fee and Fu's parents move to Little Bark to join the cast in the third season. Greenblatt planned to have something new shake up the neighborhood a little each season, but still keep the spirit the same. The third season's finale would have been about Grandpa Roland and what happened to Harvey's grandmother, and the shakeup for the next season would have been him moving into the neighborhood too. In its short time, Harvey Beaks was nominated for both an Emmy for Best Writing in an Animated Program and an Annie for Best Animated Series. Though the show is on its way out, there's always fun still to be had. For the show's rap party, Greenblatt got a special gift from his comrades. You might have guessed that he's a big fan of games, and so was the crew. So as a parting gift, they gave Greenblatt a special Harvey-styled box of the board game Ultimate Werewolf, a gift to treasure, just like friendship. I'm JD, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Harvey Beaks. Make sure to like and follow Channel Frederator for more videos. Who's your favorite character? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to check the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe to Channel Frederator, your Cartoon Central on the internet.